today we will be hearing sunil bhaiya we all know sunil bhaiya very well uh, bhaiya has been very active volunteer since he has started this uhv journey bhaiya has been playing many roles uh, one of the major roles bhaiya is taking is taking online and offline sessions in introductory as well as uhv2 workshops bhaiya is also looking after the translation part coordinating this whole translation work also bhaiya is regularly there for these morning meetings and its coordination and management so we welcome sunil bhaiya namaste bhaiya over to you so namaste all um, as uh, didi introduced me i am uh, uh, sunil kumar n i uh, hail from a village a rural place which is named as kutanad and that is recognized by the the food and agricultural organization of the united nations in 2012 as one of the three globally important agricultural heritage systems in the country i mentioned this because uh, my of my connectivity to the people in the village as well as the projects which i conduct Uh, connected to the social issues of the village uh in, in sustainability and otherwise and i am working in the same village where i have we have uh, the rural campus of the cochin university of science and technology i work as a professor and i'm currently the head of the division of civil engineering in that i have been working there for 25 years since uh till now my wife sunita she is a state government employee by profession she is currently holding the position of uh, assistant director of audit of cooperative societies my daughter parvati and my son parthan both of them are studying their btech in civil engineering my daughter has completed her btech program and she is now going to join her mdrc program in civil engineering structural engineering my son is in the second year and i am staying with my uh, mother in law my parents and siblings are staying uh, nearby 8 km away from my house so i have been involved in this uh, universe of human value activities from my attending the introductory workshop in june uh, 2020 later i attended the online sip program which was conducted by the nccip in october november 2020 at that time my daughter has joined for her btech program and i attended it along with her in 2021 i attended the refresher one part 1 and later uh, refresher one part 2 in 2022 january in between i shared the content to the students i started sharing the content to the students particularly the uhv2 course which was there in the uh, curriculum of uh, cochin university and this helped me to explore further to understand the content and to live by the content then i attended the regional volunteers meet uh, at bangalore in april 2022 and later the lead volunteers meet in pune in january 2023 then uh, i joined the morning sessions from the end of the fourth batch um and i attended thereafter fifth to 10th batch quite consistently from sixth batch onwards i could get an opportunity to join as a panelist so this helped me to explore the content much better and i have been um, uh, attending the content with uh, more awareness because uh, many times i uh, as a panelist i have to share the content from my side when the share the slides from my side while shamla didi or kumar bhaiya or gobal baba bhaiya is sharing the content is uh, uh, facilitating the content now when uh, i come to the uh, discussion of this exercises 1 and 2 observing the self by the self that is exercise 
step number one is uh, the most crucial and important step for me in exercise one. Um, I can see that I am passing through a transformation from indulgence or immersion in thoughts to observation of the imagination every moment. I can see that I'm, I, I go into observation even during conducting a UHV FDP or a technical or UHV classes to my students, interaction with uh, people around, etc. I can also see that I am influenced by uh, my previous sanskar in my imagination, particularly the sanskar of being special. I can observe the feeling of uh, relationship with my children, my wife, parents, colleagues, and students in my interaction. And I can also observe my feeling of opposition with uh, some of my colleagues when I observe my imagination. Observing the feelings unperturbed and without evaluation is a real tough task at occasions for me. For example, when my wife uh, reacts at certain situations uh, related to something improper at home or not meeting the expectations, I could observe that I also go into a state of reaction. Um, when my resource scholar got frustrated uh, of the work which uh, she has been conducting or complained regarding the facilities in the institution, I could observe myself having a feeling of helping her, not going into a feeling of reaction at that time. So uh, this observation is still going on. The step number one is very crucial and very important for me. In step number two to four, when I try to evaluate my feelings in the imagination, I can observe that much of the time, the feelings are natural to me, except for a few occasions. I can recognize the occasions at which I go into reaction, though very rare now. When I try to justify my actions during uh, my interactions with my wife, in some of the occasions in the recent past, I could see that I go into a state of reaction, as I mentioned just now. It is not natural to me. But whenever the situation is not favorable, I slip into the feeling of opposition, particularly with a few of my colleagues. Sometimes I can see that I react inside, not outside. I'm trying to be able to see the feelings which are natural and not natural to me when I evaluate the feelings, as in step number two to four. So particularly in step number three, uh, when I recognize that my feelings are in line with natural acceptance, I'm in a state of harmony within. But this state is not continuous with me. That's what I can observe. Uh, when I observe deeply my feelings, which guide my thoughts, I can see when I am in a harmony or disharmony. For example, when I observe my feeling for my uh, past uh, higher authority, who declined many of my requests for uh, facilitation of FTPs, conducting SIP sessions in own and other institutions, accompanying students for industrial visit, etc. I could see that I was in disharmony at that time. However, through observation, I can see a feeling of relationship with the person in the uh, higher authority. And as a result, I tried to open up to him many times trying to put my views and trying to help him also. But I'm still working on my feelings to him. I can see that the feeling sometimes toggle between uh, relationship and opposition. I have to work in this step much further. Step number four, to be specific, it's an all important step for, for me. So earlier, I was under the impression that the other person or the situations outside that is the reason for my unhappiness or happiness. After a few series of morning sessions, I can observe that I am responsible for all the feelings which I have. And this is evident from the feelings which I derive out of the external happenings. For example, denial of uh, several of my requests, which I considered to be genuine in some meetings at the institution. 
uh, when some of my proposals are getting rejected, I developed a feeling of opposition to the higher authority. Now, when I observe and try to undergo the step number four, I can see that it is me who has decided my feelings uh, at this moment and not by anybody. It is not influenced by anybody else or anything outside. But still, I have to work upon myself to set my feelings in line with natural acceptance. So I'm working upon this step number four, which is all important for me. So with these batches nine and 10 of exercise one, I can observe that the step number one to four are happening in quick succession. Uh, observing the imagination as they are and evaluating if they are naturally acceptable. And my uh, responsibility for my feelings could be seen as a single step. In step number five, I can see through uh, observation that I had been under many preconditioned assumptions when I took some decisions. The behavior of the other was evaluated and considered as the basis of decisions in the past. Now I recognize the need for right understanding. So as in this step, step number five, uh, this is evident from my shift in behavior with uh, some of my colleagues with whom I have been in opposition in the past. Some of my assumptions based on uh, futuristic as assessment with some colleagues went wrong when I work uh, for right understanding. I felt very low and irritated owing to unfavorable behavior of uh, some of my colleagues in the past. But after opening up to the UHP proposals and September 5 of exercise 1, I can recognize that my feelings of being low or irritation are owing to my lack of understanding. So now I try to know things to the core before jumping into assumptions or conclusions based on preconditioning or sensation. So this process is still ongoing and it is uh, continuing and working with that. Now when I come to the step number six of exercise number one, I could see the step number six A and six B much better after batches nine and 10 of exercises when I try to observe my imagination. Um, for example, when my colleagues, students or children react to me or situations are not favorable, I went into a feeling of opposition, a feeling of uh, disharmony earlier. But now I can see that this is settling down and with a uh, feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, I can see that this is, uh, I have to work within and I have to work in completeness. And uh, I'm still working in this step number 6B. In step, six, step number 6B, the contemplating relationship with every other human being, understanding harmony with the nature and realizing the coexistence with the entire existence, they're slowly being transferred from the level of information into verification in me. I can see that this is a long process. So I continue working with myself with regard to this step. Now step number seven requires uh, deeper exploration. I'm trying to understand the true meaning of harmony and coexistence through experiential validation. I can see that all creatures, even a lizard on the wall or any other object which I throw away otherwise are uh, related to me. However, understanding it in completeness is a far reaching, but not an impossible goal for me. I can see that I'm happy at this moment. However, to ensure the continuity of the same, I have to work more, explore more uh, in experientially validating the proposals. So there are several incidences which I could see um, connected to this exercise number one. For example, the incidences of uh, conduct of the graduation day, which happened recently in the campus. Um, how I could manage as a convener of that particular program, the various activities in that, and the uh, man, man management, the material management, the process management, etc. how I could do that in line with this uh, steps of exercise number one. This is very evident in me. I could manage that well, I think. 
and some of my interactions with uh, uh, my wife and my daughter when my pet dog entered into the uh, some of the rooms of the house and uh, uh, it uh, uh, accidentally broke one of the utensils over there and urinated in one of the rooms. So these incidences I could, initially they uh, cre created some irritation, but later immediately I could see that uh, this irritation is changing to a feeling of a relationship with my uh, people in the house as well as the pet dog also. So I could see that I can manage these situations well based because I my uh, observation is helping me to change from the feeling of uh, reaction to uh, a response. So because of time limitation, I'm not going into the uh, details of this. Now, when I come to the exercise ex number two, I can observe that both I and my body are existential realities and are in space as in step number one. But this uh, concept of space is still a bit far away from me. So I am exploring this. Now in step number two, I can observe that uh, I interact with the body as and when required. But most of the time I'm involved in the activity of imagination. Sensation of hunger, pain, etc., are examples which I may not read when I am involved in uh, conducting a session of technical or USB course. Uh, however, I still explore the the distance between the self and the body and the interaction happening through the space. I'm working upon myself to see this, uh, this distinction between the self and the body. From the sensation which I give importance or ignore, that is pain in different parts of the body, not reading the sensation for sleep or noise outside while focusing upon a class, etc. I can see the distinction between the self and the body to some extent. However, I have to work upon this uh, further. This is leading to step number three and four very naturally. So in step number three of exercise two, I can uh, see clearly that I ignore some of the sensations from my body at times. I forget about the body pain or some ailment in my body while I uh, conduct classes as I enjoy doing the uh, classes, conducting classes. But as and when I finish a class meeting, I become aware of the sensation from my body. Uh, this happened several times to me. I can see clearly that when I am uh, deeply involved in some of some important job, I forget about the other sensations from the body, like hunger, pain, etc., tiredness, sensations from outside, all these things. Um, to but I. Uh, catch some of the sensations, I read some of the sensations whenever I am uh, off the class, whenever I can conclude the class. Now to rightly utilize my body, I uh, in to conduct the class, I will purchase recently a teaching equipment, a teaching mic and speaker, so that I can uh, use my body very rightly. Now this is helping me for sure, because sometimes the class is for of uh, 70 students or more than 70 students, so this is helping me. Now in September 4 of exercise 2, I'm not aware of some sensations when I am uh, involved in uh, some interesting activities. Say, uh, I do play badminton. Uh, so when I uh, play badminton, many sensations of uh, like tiredness or feeling hungry or even thirst, I do not read that. Feeling of fatigue is also... Uh, being read by me only when I finish maybe a game of badminton. But I can see that I have to work with this step, step number four of exercise two, much further. In step number five, uh, regarding my interaction with the body or the world outside is by way of sensation. My past experience, that is my sanskar, with the other persons guides my response or reaction with them. Um, my mother is ill for the past six months. And sometimes she has to be hospitalized. Right now she is at home. I can see my feeling of relationship with my mother. And also I recognize that her body needs medical treatment and I need to spend time with her. So every day uh, after my college, I go to my mother. I uh, sit beside her and talk to her. 
I give this utmost priority right now. And uh, uh, when my mother interacts with me through her smile and uh, her gestures, she's not able to speak. She's not able to move even her body, many of the body parts. But when she interacts with me, I see that uh, there is some uh, level of relief, which she's also getting. And some of the decisions uh, regarding the treatment of my mother created certain difference of opinion with my father, but I could handle such situations with uh, calmness, mostly not of opposition. So in step number five of exercise two, I, that is helping me to read sensations by decision and see that my response or reaction depends on my sense card. I can see that many times I react to situations outside rather than respond. But the frequency of this reaction comes down as a consequence of this observation. In step 6a, uh, the expression of my feelings outside is a result of my sanskar. I can see this. Reactions based on external inputs are being observed now. The transformation from reaction to response is gradual. I observe that slipping back to my deep-rooted previous sanskar is now getting reduced. So many times what happened is that I slipped back to the previous sanskar and this generated a, um, a feeling of uh, opposition and sometimes I went into a, uh, a level of depression also, but now this is not happening. That's what I can observe. I can help myself to see that such occasions, my assumptions are not based on proper knowing. I spend time to understand things before acting based on assumptions. So interaction with students during the recent industrial visit is an example. I think I have shared this uh, last time also, so I do not go into the details of that. Now in step number six B, I have started working with this step through my observation of uh, returning back to my previous sense car. Uh, owing to lack of uh, right understanding. This was there with me in the past. So when some of my proposals to strengthen the content of presentation to an assessment team were rejected in the past in a meeting by my head authority, I did not slip to my previous scar of arrogance, but could speak to the authority with a feeling of affection privately and convey my points. The partial acceptance of the suggestions was an indication of ensuring naturally acceptable feelings in me. Even if my suge the suggestions were not accepted, I tried to find alternate paths to present the good practices uh, to the assessment team, and uh, it worked. The questions which are asked by many participants in the recent face-to-face -face, uh, UHP workshops could be answered to some level of their satisfaction owing to this opening up of understanding in me. I can see that the continuity of happiness is possible, though much work is required in this regard. And this step number seven of exercise two, I'm trying to see that I'm in coexistence with all of the units in space. I can see that I'm in space, but and my body is in space, but I'm still trying to understand the space. The step seven is to be experienced with much more time and working upon this. So I feel that I have uh, to undergo this step exercises one and two again and again. And this observation is to happen every moment and more clarity and understanding is required in this. And I have to practice this in continuity in my living. I have a feeling of being special and enjoy privilege of the same in the past. But I see that all human beings are similar at the level of purpose program and potential. And we differ only at the level of competence. So as and when I interact with my colleagues, students, friends, and my family members, I'm able to see my level of competence improving, though the process is gradual. And when I come to this indicator number four in the slide, that is happiness is uh, my innate nature and not the effect of uh, from outside this part. I had been searching for happiness outside as I was in a confused state before verifying most of the proposals of UHP. I could recognize that I have a natural acceptance in 
natural inclination towards the proposals of USB while attending my first workshop. My affinity to the proposals and wish to verify them are results of the same. Now, regarding my uh, happiness, the dependence on expectation from outside is getting reduced drastically now. As uh, I can observe it through my interactions with people and nature. My research on sustainable construction, working with students, occasionally not turning into favorable results, etc., are not affecting my happiness now. So I can see that uh, the happiness is innate. I'm trying to see it bit by bit, and I'm getting this improvement through this uh, observation now. Now coming to my commitment part, as the observations um, is a, a continuous process, I try to develop right understanding through all the activities, whether they are interactions with other human beings or work with the nature. I can see a gradual shift in my feelings naturally acceptable to uh, gradual shift in my feelings to naturally acceptable one. Uh, as many of my projects belong to sustainable construction, I can see I can I can directly relate the proposals with the work and devote time to social responsibilities. I shall continue sharing values at various levels and platforms, helping myself and others to improve competence. I shall continue my volunteering activities online and offline, workshops, uh, weekly meetings, the Kerala chapter meetings, the Kusat UHP cell meetings, various projects uh, connected to UHP, including the translation work uh, that is translating the content to Malayalam and other connected activities. Now I can observe that there is no distinction or boundary between my regular academic activities and UHP activities. When I involve myself in teaching and guiding engineering content, the proposals of UHV comes in and help me and students to see things with clarity. I speak about being aware and human goals in the classes very often, connecting to the flow of my academic discussions. The recent discussion on uh, research ethics and methodology at an engineering college in a nearby town when I conducted a session for this uh, FDP, uh, which is titled as the importance of value guidance in research, purpose program and potential. I could see that the connectivity between this research and this uh, value guidance, and I could convey some of my thoughts regarding this to the participants over there. So, and also in other activities, uh, I can see the influence of the proposals of UHP in a very natural way. So this is what I can see for myself. So my sincere gratitude to all the co-explorers who are helping me directly or indirectly, particularly my mentors, um, Ganesh Ji, Shamla Didi, Kumar Bhaiya, uh, Umesh Bhaiya, Gobal Bhaiya, and other panel members who are uh, sitting over here or otherwise, and all the co-explorers uh, in the mentoring, in the, in the morning sessions or otherwise. I express my sincere thanks to Rajulji also, Vanchanaji, Rajulji, and all the other mentors who are helping me in improving my competence. So with this, really, I conclude my sharing. Thank you so much. Namaste. Now, we would like to uh, listen to Gopal Bhaiya for his uh, remarks on the sharing. Gopal Bhaiya. Namaste Bhaiya. Namaste. So, I was listening to you patiently, and uh, you shared your views very honestly, your state of consciousness very honestly. And I can sense from your sharing that Bhaiya is much aware of the state of his consciousness, where he is lacking when he has a feeling of relationship, when he has a feeling of opposition, all Bhaiya is aware about that. And this is a good thing that I am aware continuously what is happening in me. Many times he appears in harmony outside for many people, but he is aware inside what is happening in consciousness. 
and this is good in this journey that I am aware what is happening in you. And regarding this feeling of relationship, so I can say, summarize the sharing in three points. Number one, Bhaiya is aware what is happening inside when he is able to handle, number one. When he is not able to handle, where he has to work, number two. And number three, conviction about process. So he is convinced that this process will help him to resolve all the internal issues gradually. And as an expansion, when he is interacting outside, so as he said, he is very healthy. So it shows that his expansion of feeling of relationship is increasing day by day. And it also shows that I am getting resolved inside day by day. That's why I am able to expand outside day by day. And another point which I like, which I have learned from here today, is the purpose. That I am asking about my purpose every time. When I am interacting with my student, what is my purpose? When I am interacting with my management, what is my purpose? So I think asking these questions ourselves again and again, what is my purpose? It gives us a lot of clarity. Mm -hmm. And also, I can say it is a tool that will save us mm -hmm. uh, being diverted outside. So it is very good that I am asking my purpose. Once purpose is clear, then this process will help us a lot. So in that sense, I can say Bhaiya is resolving day by day and very soon with time, he will be in a better state of consciousness than today. So this is all about me here. Best wishes. Thank you.